fact or fiction and form, but in the end it, it comes down to who's using them. Is it the ego using them to, to reinforce guilt or something, or is it the Holy Spirit? Because this is the thing that came up with Gary Renard's book, you know, who he said he had two ascended masters, yeah. come and this and this, and there's big debate within the Course community of whether it actually happened or not, whether he was making it all up. There was a woman years ago named Marla Morgan who wrote a book called Mutant Message Down Under, seemingly with her being invited to Australia. She thought to accept an award, and she went down there, and she was at her hotel, and this man came, picked her up, and takes her out to the bush among the Aborigines, and they basically say, take off all your clothes, give us all your jewelry, your watch, purse, shoes, everything. She's pretty surprised. She gives it to him, and the last thing she sees is this woman with a stack of all of her clothes and jewelry and wallet, purse, and everything smiling and throwing it into the fire. <laughs> and then she's led on walkabout with these telepathic aborigines. Well, Marla Morgan came back and she started going around to Unity Churches, because she belonged to Unity Church, but in telling her story, which became a book, Mutant Message Down Under, and then a huge controversy arose. Did she make the whole thing up, or did that actually happen? It was an amazing teaching device, like, like a you know, Gary Renard. Gary's always said, no, it's, they actually did come. And yeah. I've done whole talks with him, we're just showing that it's, it's all fiction, basically, so we can't draw a line between the fact and fiction. We just have to look at, does it open your heart up? Does it bring you peace? You know, it's, it's beating around the, the bush when you try to do that. With politicians, you know, that goes on and on. Did they do this? Did they not do this? You know, people are always trying to slam the politicians or bring them down. It's a win and lose kind of thing. And then there was another friend of mine, I just, he was the one who had the music for the hula hoopers, Jimmy Twyman. He had this book, um, the, what was it, Silent Brotherhood, it was yeah. Celestine, no, what Celestine was it? Prophet. Silent Brotherhood. No. The Silent Brotherhood, but there was the name of his book, Emissary, Emissary of Light. Light. So this book, Emissary of Light, came over where he allegedly went over to around Kosovo area in Europe and met this group of men that were in silence called the Silent Brotherhood, who were praying for all mankind and very mystical encounter and everything. Came back, wrote his book, he went around. The same thing happened with, with Jimmy. Did it actually happen or did he make this whole thing up? So I use those three kind of striking examples to say that it's, it's of course, on the level of the surface, you know, you want to be truthful, uh, but, but even that, you know, like in the court of law, you promise to tell the, the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Everything in perception is, is a projection. So we could say that there seems to be a relative truth, like something that seemed to happen or didn't seem to happen. But then when you go much deeper, you start to realize that cracked perception or distorted perception is the problem. That everything seen through the body's eyes, through the egoic filter in the mind, is distorted. And that's why Jesus has a whole course in mind training to take us back to what he calls true perception or the real world, which is just purified perception seeing the world with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, instead of through the egoic filter. So, you know, those are the kind of things that are the, that are the big snags when people start to get, when two people get into an argument, it's usually, you know, there's, there's a, a pretty gross difference in the, the perception of what happened. And so, one person will see it through their filter and say, no, this is actually it, quit lying, this is actually what happened, and another person may say, no, that's not it. This is what happened, actually. Or 12 eyewitnesses to an automobile accident, mm -hmm. and then you get 12 different accounts of what actually happened, because that's how variable perception works. So, it takes a lot of mind training, but that's what all the great philosophers and, and spiritual seekers throughout the ages have always tried to do. And the Course is like from an awakened mind, so it just, it just gives you like a head start, boost. <laughs> Instead of kind of wading through the mud and the muck, you've got this huge boost of having Jesus Christ give you a very direct pathway 
to forgiveness or heal perception. And with you, and AC came through the Mormon tradition. I was, I was watching again on my, I don't know if it's one of my clips I'm going to show, but it might be. They were interviewing Joel Osteen, and it was back when Mitt Romney was running for president, which brought Mormonism into yeah. the public spotlight. And so here the interviewer is like saying, so, so do you, do you believe Mitt Romney, kind of like when he's talking about his faith? Do you actually believe him? Is, is Mormonism Christian? And, and so that was, it was, it. and there's Joel who's got the, the largest church <laughs> in the United States in terms of uh, one space, one, one building. But uh, he was like, he's like, yeah, we, you know, he talked about Jesus. He tried to bring it back to the same Jesus, but then the questioner came in with, but Joseph Smith, do you know, said, so he started to bring in specific Joseph Smith things about this is the only church and you should, you shall not go to any other church, you know, da 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 da. And so, because Joel tends to take more of a. Well, you know Joel's um, whole story. Non you know anything about him? I know just a little bit. He was a behind the scenes cameraman filming his father, in the, in, who had a very successful church, and his father died. And so the whole congregation looked to him to be the new leader. He said, well, no, there's no, he was very shy. Yeah, yeah. He loved the camera work behind the camera. Yeah. Very, very shy. And uh, so he, uh, over a period of time, I guess he, he agreed to do it. But what Joel always did was he goes out and reads and brings pieces of stories or a story into a sermon. So he always pre-wrote the sermons, and he would get up there basically from memory mm -hmm. because of his shyness and nervousness and do it. Well, then they, that, who was the, who's the Houston basketball team? Houston Rockets? Or the, the Rockets, I think. That he, they bought their old Coliseum. Oh, yeah. 70,000 people. And uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a story. But he'll never do good on an interview because, see, he just preaches from his writings and memorizes them. It actually keeps them in front of him. And just, he's a, he, he is a, he's a great orator, he's a great speaker, but yeah. he'll never do good. Well, that's part of it, He doesn't too. really have any strict beliefs because <laughs> he was just kind of forced into a position, you know, somewhat forced into a position of doing that, but which has been very successful. I think a lot of his money yeah. comes from his books. And, there, you know, it's a stepping stone yeah. spirituality. It's all, a very stepping stone. If you hang stone. around, that's, that's kind of all in there, including Victoria, his wife, and then sure. it's a family. The brothers and yeah. sisters, yeah, they're yeah, all there, yeah. too. It's like a family it's thing. It's a great family, and it's a very basic, you know, stepping stone spirituality. If you're just coming into it, it's a great message to yeah. hear. But you know, I don't know how long you can sit and listen to it and not want to go past it. But it's, it, you know, that's America. Yeah, yeah he tries America. to stay. They just want to hear what they want to he hear. He tries to stay it. very positive. And the thing about it was, even in this panel discussion, he would kind of come back and he said, "I'm just, I just really want to lift people up." I just want to lift people up, you know, you could see that that was coming out of his heart. As they started getting into the issues, and he's right. like, well, yeah. I don't talk about if these issues to his sermons, in my sermons. very seldom will even quote a verse. Yeah. Very seldom. He, it's, it's more of a, he's more of a, a, a Zig Ziglar than yeah. anything, yeah. if anybody ever heard yeah. of him. But, but I think Dating that's myself what's, there. That's I love Zig, Zig Ziglar. It's and it's good to, to watch these just for discernment, because... You know, we are to have the inspiration of the Lord, the Spirit pour through us, and there, it, we're not ultimately trying to persuade others or win souls. We learn from the Course, it's all just part of our own healing and conversion. But it's also good for discernment because, you know, you're, it's like if you find yourself locked in or attracted to certain ways and, and reacting against certain things, those all things, those have to come up for healing. Because if you're attracted or repulsed, so it's good to, I always think, I've always liked having a, a nice broad swath, and we haven't really had anything here where we had Joel and Benny Hinn, and Deepak just sat there the whole time. He didn't open his mouth once, he just, I kept, he was like, He's uh, praying his publicist he was like, time. right, he was just praying like, <laughs> probably for his publicist. Like, <laughs> Deepak, so nice. <laughs> so you're going to want to be sitting right there and just, <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
I think I, I feel like I've come the other way where it's like I've had a bit of resistance towards like any Christian kind of teachings mm-hmm. and even the, the feeling that someone could have actually had like a deep experience. I just watch those thoughts in my mind. But I was, I was listening to um, Kim Walker last night yeah. and yeah. heard such a deep experience. And yeah. I love listening to her. I was just mesmerized because you could really feel where it was coming from. Yeah. She always comes from the heart. Yeah. And, and also she kind of always says it's beyond the words in a book. It's mm-hmm. about the experience. It's yeah. just like... Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a big singer. Um, Jesus culture. Jesus oh, culture. Okay. Oh. Amazingly powerful voice, but also she's had like these vision kind of experiences where with Jesus, but it's you can really just feel the heart behind it all. I was just like, <laughs> yeah. <mesmerized. laughs> yeah. She was just on this thing. I got a number of months ago. I I just got told of this thing that was happening this summer going to happen in August, but then it happened actually in July, earlier this month, or last month, but um, it was called Awakening Europe, because I've used the phrase Awakening Mind Europe for so many things. I built a website, I had an online group, and I've been over to Europe many, many times doing Awakening Mind Europe, and now that I said, what's this, Awakening Europe? I saw the, the only thing that was missing was the mind in the middle, and they decided to go to Germany and fill a stadium with Christians of this this giant stadium that Hitler built. So they're just going to repurpose <laughs> the stadium. You know, Hitler built it and now they're going to fill it up with a bunch of believers and have a big, you know, like a, a revival. And so they got Kim Walker to come up wow. and it was live streamed. And so I, there was a couple of days I was like, okay, what do we got? And they were the testimonies and Kim Walker singing and, and they were doing the wave. The Christians were going around this, they were just having a playful time in this stadium that Hitler built, you know, to like make a joyful noise for the Lord, like the Bible. So it's, but it was really, really good, because how it happened, how they were inspired to do it, a lot of like huge enthusiasm and this and that, and then the healings. There was all kinds of testimonies of, of healings of people that couldn't walk, that could walk, and so on and so forth. It tends to happen when there's a, a strong synergy of all that, that energy and, and everybody's just into the glory and praising and, and so then they would they would go I for the past days even after it they were showing testimonies of people talking about their healings when they came there but it was a, awakening Europe you know that's the, the way they see it it's still and it, as if certain people and places need to be awakened but it was yeah that love energy symbols. vibe that just that forgetting of yourself yeah. that's yeah. just that kind of involuntary nature yeah. and I was just reading something during the week where it was saying that it was it was a witch's ceremony but it was part of it that they actually kind of have a natural party first it doesn't seem very spiritual or, or even ceremonious but it's to just uh, like raise the vibration but really just allow the relaxation to allow what would actually happen then just yeah. forgetting like just just yeah. I don't know I guess it's love I always feel from you, it's just yeah. that. Yeah, very open and welcoming. Yeah. It's good. I, I did my lesson today and read from the text and did my little um, commentary, but then afterwards I was guided to uh, ACIM Inspirations, our friend Gary Hassler, mm. and who uses all um, words from the Course. Was that? Read by Jim Walker. James. James Stewart. Jim Stewart, yeah, and it was all these, to, yeah, with all to. these <laughs> images and everything. So I watched the one today, Obstacles to Peace, which is good because it's be- very graphic and so forth. But it's got all these beautiful. Those f- uh, four obstacles are amazing in the depth. Um, so yeah, I think it's it's good. It's we're just kind of on the cusp of the Great Awakening, riding the big wave, and and we did go to see uh, Mission Impossible, which I said it's, it's probably not for like general consumption, it needs a lot of discernment, and I, but a lot of um, commentary, but, but that will be something that will, will work its way around to us, because it has a lot of deep teachings about, you know, getting past the idea of, of planning and, and just getting so into the flow, which the main character has to be. Because this everything just turns and changes like that. Now you see me new movie mm-hmm. where everything you think you got it. No, it's nothing like you think. Like think is this? No, it's nothing. That's what Mission Impossible was all the way through. And then this female character that he's kind of 
paired up with like Bond occasionally, but these two were really kind of in, it was a very interesting relationship of, of equals and both fantastic skills and this and this, but but there were subtle deceptions and things going on underneath. As with all interpersonal relationships, there's there's things under under the surface that have to be brought up. And then at the end though, near the end, she actually got to a point where she she said, remember that part where she said there's three options, and she gave the first option, and Nathan, Nathan it was a hunt. He it's, it's uh, he paid attention to the first one. Yeah, it was like two options are like, okay, we can do it this way, we can do it, we can catch this guy this way, we can do it th this way, and then she goes on the third option, you can walk away with me now. Whoa. Yeah, which wow. I just. <laughs> Walk away from it all, yeah. and, and it was like, well, that's the holy instant. It was wow. like right in the middle Ooh, of Mission Church. Impossible. Yeah, you can come with me. Yeah, just came out a couple of days ago. So that was like, you know, so that so there's all kinds of things all around us, even some of the newer movies. But that was a nice moment. We were all like, ooh, mm -hmm. <laughs> come with me and walk away. It's like it's like the mind is so. It's kind of like such a strong reflection of where the mind's at. It's yeah. like, because, you know, there's mind training, and it's like, we can unwind your mind, unwind, unwind, like layers, even in the movies, there's a layer, there's another one, and then there's this moment where the mind gets upon that place where it can actually hear, you can walk away now, mm -hmm. or like, you can really walk away, like, nothing ever gets solved, it's like, you know, it's just kind of like, spirit has to bring you to that place, and it's like, whether or not you even choose it, you know, it's not even the point, but it's like, at least there that, there's that awareness, it's like, yes, you can walk away, now you can stop it, it's like, because otherwise it's like, what is it for, you know, like, I do it, and I do it, it's like, or, yeah, you can walk away. It's like Matrix. It's like, okay, there's this, this, or, you know, you walk into eternity or you can save Trinity. And it's like, you know, you can walk away from all of it now, all drama, all, all conflict. And it's deep and it's like, it's like holy instant. It's kind of like quantum moment. And I was like, yeah, quantum moment. It's like quantum. It's almost like there's this mystery with quantum, almost like it feels so big and it's like, Quantum, you know, it's like it's just a holy instant. It's just an invitation into a holy instant when it's just like oh, and you don't know when that happens either. It just comes in when it's when the mind's ready. It's like yeah, you can walk away, like or like or other words like you, or you can stay with me now, like forever, like you can just stay with me. And it's so cool. And we came back, and I was like, and I was like, what from the movie? And I was like, what just happened? And I was like, and then it just hit me. I'm like, because I was sharing with Suzanne, and she's like, how's the movie? And I was like, deep, so deep. It's just so, so deep, just beyond. And then I'm like, so she was asking, what was it about? I said, something's, and I'm like, so she said, will you recommend it? And I was like, and I'm like, and it just hits me. I'm like, wait, the whole outing was like a holy instant. That and I'm like, Wait, wait, and I'm like, the movie was part of it, so I can't say, like, I'll recommend specifically the movie. It was like, the experience, like, the movie was part of it, and everything was part of it. It was, like, and and the message of the movie, like, like, walk away with me now, stay with me, and I'm like, that was the experience. It's like, that was the experience. It was a holy instant, and again, you don't know how it happens, it's just like you... It's like you go, you just go, 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 follow, show up. It's like there's a movie, and I was like, I'm going. I think, you know, I'm going. Yeah, like this is it's this way in the morning. I even hesitated just before, just before we were leaving. But then I made an agreement with David: if you go, I'll go. Yeah. <laughs> so that was kind of like brought to my attention. And then yeah, and then boom, it happens. And it's like, and it's, you know, like, you know, it takes away this mystery from the quantum, like, in Ant-Man. It's like, like, of all the things, it's no mystery at all. It's actually, I mean, but it's just amazing, so, I mean, I'll recommend the whole thing. The whole experience or the movie? <laughs> uh, the whole thing? I mean, I mean, it's not a part that it's, like, yeah. highly recommended. Yeah. It's, like made it's like those who are gonna be called I mean like made all all of it be used in such a way. 
All of it, like all of it. Yeah. Know, like it gave it a sense too of it, the, the higher orchestration of things because you know, even with all the we do and living miracles and the different things, it's still if you try to conceptualize it on a timeline and make something out of it a meaning, it's still far short of what it is. But what I liked about this movie was that from the very beginning of the movie, it became apparent that, that, that Tom Cruise, you know, Ethan Hunt and his team, they were being disbanded. So it would be like dis everything disband, disband, and so they were scattered all over the the planet, and the team was scattered, and then I guess they were called the IMF. It was completely dismantled at a con congressional level. The CIA had it dismantled, and then. There's something going on that needs to seemingly need, needs to be solved, and one by one they're kind of drawn back in, except not in any cohesive kind of way. You know, they're just out of the love. They're all operating on their own, but not cohesively at all. So it's not like a team movie, you know, where the team, all the football team, all comes together and overcomes their obstacles and wins. No, this was like they were disbanded from the beginning. There, there's one moment in the movie where it's a, it's a chase scene, and two of them are in one car, and they're chasing, chasing, being chased, and there's motorcycles involved and other vehicles, and they come to this corner, like street corner, in Morocco, and I guess it's near Casablanca or something, and they come to the street corner, and these the two cars come together from different angles, so they can't see each other because of the building. Mm. And then they just look at each other, and it's just like one of those inception moments. Like, like what are you doing here now? They just had just the precious looks on all their faces. Like they've been brought together by the Spirit. And in that moment, they're just like, and then they go right back into the, the chase scene. And it's, cause it, but, it's, but it's just one of those precious moments, like inception when they're on the plane and they're they're oh. coming back, and they all have that look of recognition, like, yeah, like thank you, thank you for everything, you know. That it's it was there was some just moments like that was just like one moment out. And there, of the there's movie. a few moments like yeah, adorable yeah. moments like that, like I'm just like oh, like what are you doing? Oh, like, or what's happening? What, right. what is this? What is this? Like the woman that comes and helps save him, he's just about ready. To, he's yeah. being t tortured. The beginning of the movie, and she just she's there in the room, but he doesn't see any way out. And then she's kind of got this presence, and and it's like you could see them ma making eye contact, and that's she's going to actually help him. But as soon as these bodies go flying, and he starts to escape, he just looks at her and he goes, "Who are you?" He just has no <laughs> box in his mind. But and that again was another great moment of this, the spirit. Who are you? Tom Cruise is like looking right in her eye. Who are you? You know, and then yeah. it would come around, yeah, a number of times. Too one time when he was chasing her on a motorcycle, and she's just kind of standing <laughs> there, and he just like totally wipes out. It's it's got all kinds of subtle little yeah. moments there, but they're all these quantum mm -hmm. moments. Like it's all one experience that we can't figure it out. That's why people try to study and. They try to do it through rituals and all the things that human, the human mind will try to reach it. And it's like this big let go of everything. That's what happened with the church service this morning. I get Ricky and um, Kirsten are flowing on this book, I Married a Mystic, and it's been flowing. But then it hit this, this, this snag where it just, the flow just got, it got seemingly, they just were thrown out of it. And I was using a lot different things on the phone for the for the hour that you guys were having church in there to try to come back, have them come back more and more, but it's more of just a surrender moment of letting go of everything, just absolutely everything. You can't pull a scrap of perception from the world and think that that's going to aid you in coming to true understanding. It's more of a, just let it all go. And I like the I like the looks on the characters when they have even a moment in the movie. They're they're just kind of looking at each other like, <laughs> what? Or when they they were asking Tom Cruise about the you know the in his Ethan Hunt character like what's next, and then all the opinions and he was you can see he was like praying. Yeah. He's just like, not calling it that in his, in this movie, but it was like he was just in a moment of yeah, tuning yeah. in. Because it's like even that 
the most amazing thing about this movie is that yeah, they came together in love. Like it was just love that brought them back together one by one. That like it's just they couldn't help. They're like just like there's just love. Like what are you gonna do? Even like mm -hmm. trying to save themselves like wouldn't work. And so it's like you have to do it. Mm -hmm. And then at some point, it's like yeah, when I got like towards the end almost, uh, they they actually they were joining so to speak. Mm -hmm. And he was praying, and they're like, "Listen, is the, it's like they were kind of even questioning him a little bit. Like, you just want to get that guy because your ego is bruised because he keeps beating you. You just want to beat the guy who constantly beats you, and that's why you're so after it." And he's like, "Is this what you think it's all about? Like, it really is this what you is this what you think I'm after?" He was just like so open too it's just like really it's like like i was like please share your thoughts almost like please share this because what we like we have to like go further if this is what you think the purpose of, that, of yeah. this mission is like we can't possibly go like further did they know at the beginning when this uh situation arose that they were each going to be did they know when they all started to try to tackle the situation they you said they all came together to solve some problems. No. They, didn't, they, didn't they were dismantled from the beginning. Okay. And so, so they weren't even called the, into the, the same thing. They were just drawn The spirit into it. kind of orchestrates yeah. the whole thing. Sweet. It's almost like they're not even conscious of what's happening. Until they find each other in the midst of, of attempting to solve problems. And even when they find each other, that doesn't help them at all either. <laughs> oh, no. When the bodies come together, no. They're, they're just still like... <laughs> what is going on, you know, do, do we trust this, can we trust this, and so forth. You know, that, I think even more so, when they come together, they, they're they really, yeah. they're aware that they're more clueless. Uh -huh. That they think, you'd think when they come together they could just talk it out and, uh -huh. no. It, that's the way the whole movie was, uh -huh. was going. And then that one, I think that's just, that was just for us when she said, just come with me and, yeah. mm -hmm. and leave it all. That was just, whoa, that's... It's just Holy Spirit just zipping in the answer, like, here, I'll just tuck this one <laughs> right in the middle here. Yeah. It's amazing, but it's amazing. Like, what, it's just like, this is where, kind of like, you can't deny the experience of the dreamer of the dream. Because it's like, this is so dreamy. <laughs> so, it's like, it's just like, we'll you're up, kidding. We'll end up like, getting like, it on, and, on digitally, and we'll probably do a big, deep session yeah. And put it on Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment, oh, yeah. and it's our gift to the whole. We have to. Cosmos. Like this is so deep. I mean, it's just. I I actually I wonder if the rest are actually going to see that scene. I wouldn't be surprised if 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 I'd hear like, no, there was no such a scene. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's just it's that dream. It's just it's that kind. It's it's a dream. It's like, what do you want to hear? It's like, you'll hear what you want to hear. And it's so it just becomes, it's like, this is where the mind's at. It's like, it, it's starting to hear. It's come upon that, like, point where it actually, it knows there's that option. It knows it. It's like, it's constantly there. So, but it's, yeah, it's forgiveness, true forgiveness. It's like, active. <laughs> 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 Last week. I, want, I can't remember. I'm watching all sorts of your talks now. They're so helpful. And you used the phrase digital protection. And that morning, I had been on a hike, or a walk through this neighborhood. I call it a hike to sound, you know, because it was uphill and down. But I, so I'm, I'm drawn to certain things. And there was a sign, uh, like a for sale sign. I'm like, oh, great house. And then I look again at the sign, like, that doesn't mean anything. And underneath it was a sign for the um, alarm system because the house was unoccupied. They had moved out already. It was for sale. And it had the name of it. And then I was drawn to the words digital protection. <laughs> and when I heard you say it later, I'm like, okay, I trust you. You have my back. <laughs> you said it. The sign said it. I've been looking for that assurance. Yeah. That I can't see it, but it's here. Mm. That was so amazing. Yeah. I have that with. with so, so often I'm embarrassed like like uh, Ricky said something about the uh, what did you call it perceptionaholic I mean I, I literally have felt that in my head and she said you didn't say that and I thought and then I heard you say it like a day later on mm -hmm. a talk like, hmm. 
God is speaking through you people. To the, I mean, for, for now, now I know why the DH a year before I ever heard of David Hoffmeister, all these things, huh. is such a, a, a guide that, that I need. I can't. I couldn't just walk in and have one or two moments of, oh yeah, you know, what I used to call them. Um, I can't remember what I used to call them. Not really divine intervention, but um, serendipitous events. But they happen here too often, and it's. <laughs> it's I'm not even surprised anymore. We just watch serendipitous. Yeah. I, I seriously, I thought I'm going to make monitor what I'm watching. How could they have gotten a hold of my laptop? <laughs> that is Christ central. I love that term, Christ central. Yeah. Central casting. So thank you all for being connected to the same Christ central that I'm connected to today. JC central. Yeah, JC, JC central. central. Go up the yeah. hill and we just, yeah. just get a recorder and stuff up, up there. Just get a launch. Yeah. Or we'll have it out. Yeah, it's getting...